Ask Reddit. What is the scariest story you know that is 100% true? I work at a maximum security prison and we have several inmates who are severely mentally ill. The ones that self-harm wear a Fitbit kind of thing to monitor heart rate, if there is a change we rush their room to stop whatever is happening. On top of this we also do visual inspections. On one round a coworker was doing cell checks and noticed this particular inmate had blood on their face but nothing came up on the monitors or anything. So he called to the inmates to ask if they were okay. The inmate had their eyes closed and just kept repeating, it doesn't hurt. The inmate would not answer where the blood was from. We opened the cell to see what the situation was and it turns out the inmate had plucked out both of their eyes and they were laying on the floor. The inmate's HR monitor never alerted and the inmate never screamed. Paramedics said the inmate's vitals were normal and the inmate was fully responsive. Was working the evening shift at a gas station. Man comes in all disoriented. I go to help him out. He has a gash on his head and doesn't know where he was. I couldn't see any crashes around so assumed he had fallen or something. Normally we are supposed to stay inside the glass shielded register area whenever anyone is in the store. I, being a nice human being, went to help, while calling the police slash EMS they got there, and checked him out. They thought his head may have been fractured. Took him to the ER I went back to work. Cops stopped back by for some coffee a few hours later. They told me the guy got hit by a baseball bat trying to break into a little girl's bedroom, and was wanted for a band murder in two other states. I never left the register area at night again. Three sailors survived the sinking of the USS West Virginia at Pearl Harbor, only to die 16 days later, due to the lack of air. The Navy knew they were there, but couldn't get to them. Tough to pick just one, because there is true evil in humanity out there. Stuff like the Blood Eagle ritual is pretty awful. But in terms of really scary, probably stuff that just kind of happens on accident. Like the story of Kyle Plush. Just awful. He was in a minivan that has one of those back seats that you can push backward to lay flat in the trunk for extra storage space. He went to grab something in the trunk, leaning over the seat, and it tipped backward and pinned him, upside down, against the back of the car in a position such that he couldn't get himself out. He called the police twice. The second time he called and gave them a very clear description of the car. Plush called 911 again at around 3.35 p.m. Police said this time he provided a description of the vehicle as he desperately pleaded for help, but couldn't hear the dispatcher. Isaac said the information didn't get relayed to officers at the scene. This is not a joke, the teen said over 911. I'm almost dead. He asked the dispatcher to tell my mom I love her if I die. Just a horrible, random accident that could have happened to anybody. This kid didn't go looking for trouble, like he didn't try and go down a chimney or go caving. Like other people who have gotten stuck and suffocated. He was just reaching for something in his trunk, got pinned, and then was not found in time. Nightmarish for the kid and his family. My dad and some friends got drunk and went for a drive on some back roads and were going as fast as the truck would go as teenagers. My dad was slightly less drunk than the others and eventually demanded they let him get out. They pulled over and he and one other girl got out. He and the girl started walking to town, while the other three sped off in the opposite direction. Well less than a mile up the road from where they got out is an extremely sharp turn, which they missed, and hit a tree going pretty close to triple digits, miles per hour. Two of them died on impact and the only reason the third survived is because they crashed in front of a house that two doctors lived in. The survivor was paralyzed and lost his leg and part of his arm and was in the hospital for 8 months before dying. This was in the 60s, so medical care wasn't what it is today. When I first got my permit my dad took me to that corner to explain the importance of safe driving. It gave me goosebumps about how close he was to being in the truck. He said that the dad of the driver got what remained of the truck to be hung up in the center of town for months after to be a warning to all. Oh. In my town in the early 90s there was a notorious killer that had all of British Columbia, Canada on watch. My wife's mother, years and years before I knew them, had been home alone while her husband was in England doing tree surgeon work, arborist. She was in her laundry room when a man walked up from her basement, completely scaring her. She freaked out and said what the hell are you doing here? 
He said he was friends with her husband, and was just coming to see if he was here. Apparently he told him he could just walk in, which she knew was bullcrap. She was smart enough to tell him that he was just at the store and would be back any minute. He said he would wait outside for him. As soon as he left she called the police, but he was long gone by the time they got here. Two weeks later, the killer was caught, his mug should put on TV, and it was the guy in her house. My family has a similar story, and I'm pretty sure some of you serial killer buffs out there might figure out who it is before the reveal, because their story is pretty unique. When my parents were in college they went on a trip down to Florida. They had met through mutual friends, and were down there together, but hadn't gone on a date yet. My dad and one of his friends were planning to meet my mom and some of her friends at a hotel, but being the carefree college guys they were they lost track of time and realized it was impossible to get to the hotel on time by walking. They decided the best solution to their problem was to hitchhike and a car with two women picked him up. Everything seemed fine until the driver asked them if it was okay to stop for gas. My dad and his friend agreed it was no problem since they were making good time and she drove into a gas station. She then pumped her car full of gas before hopping back in and flooring it, basically stealing the gas with two hitchhikers in the back. My dad and his friend were beginning to freak out when she pulled a gun from under her seat and asked are we gonna have a problem or something like that. My dad and his friend shook their heads vehemently because what else do you do in that situation? She then drove them to the hotel and dropped them off without so much as a scratch and they kinda thought nothing of it until the news started reporting on a serial killer in Florida, known as Aileen Wuornos. He took one look at her picture and instantly recognized her as the driver. The only reason my dad thinks she didn't straight up kill them was because they were super polite and respectful to her, and her victims were usually scumbag guys trying to take advantage of her. The Lake Nias Disaster the lake periodically belches a cloud of invisible carbon dioxide gas that suffocates everything within a 16 mile radius. In 1986, over 1700 people and all their livestock died without even understanding what was happening to them. The 1904 Cincinnati Privy Disaster. In 1904, nine school girls drowned in an outhouse after the floor collapsed. They literally drowned in human waste. My friend's boss bought an Audi A4 convertible back when they were new and interesting. One of the talking points was the pop-up roll hoops that were hidden unless you rolled it. A few months after buying it, he got to test those roll hoops out as he lost control and skidded down a steep bank about 10 meters, 35 feet deep. The roll hoops did their job and he survived with just cuts and scratches from the bushes he plowed through. The car ended up the right way up, and he got out, walked back up the bank to the side of the road, then got on the phone to the police to report the accident. While he was standing there a driver from a car that had seen the accident came over to speak to him. Approaching from behind the other driver asked if he was okay. My friend's boss turned around to reply and dropped dead. His neck had been fractured, but was in one piece right up until he turned his head when it severed his spinal cord. An acquaintance of mine sent his son to triathlon camp in Texas. A week later, his son came back from camp. The next day, the son was complaining of a headache. Four days later, he was dead. Healthy, happy, fit 12 year old one week, dead the next. Turns out the lake had neatly rear F.O. Larry, the brain eating amoeba. Nothing scares me as irrationally as already being dead and waiting for your body to catch on. One of my friends had someone following her home, hiding in the bushes, so they couldn't be seen. She booked it to her house, got inside, and he was watching the house from the outside. She called the cops. They come along quietly and got the jump on him. He had condoms, handcuffs, and a knife. When they got his DNA, it turned out that he was linked to a half dozen rapes in the area. She credits her regimen of running, sprints to outrunning him that night, and firmly believes she would have been raped if she couldn't outrun him then. Rule number 1 Cardia This is a hometown story that stayed with me. It happened literally right around the corner from where I grew up, maybe a 2 minute drive away. Judy Kirby murdered 6 children and one adult by intentionally driving the wrong way on a divided highway in an attempt to commit suicide. She had been hospitalized for depression but had also just ended a relationship with her ex-husband's brother and was by some reports involved in drug trafficking and fearing an imminent arrest. 
she picked up her sister's son, who was celebrating his 10th birthday that day, she then loaded her three children into the car, supposedly to pick up a gift for the nephew. Instead, she went missing with the carload of kids. A short time later, calls started coming into 911 about a car going the wrong way down the highway at a high rate of speed. They made it about 90 seconds before a head-on collision with another vehicle, driven by a father with two children and another child along for the ride. The crash annihilated both vehicles. The only survivors were Kirby herself and the child who was along for the ride in the other car. There were pieces of children all over the highway. She was sentenced to 215 years in prison. My brother's ex-girlfriend had two older sisters. They died before she was born. One day they decided to play hide and seek or something. So anyway, they both climbed inside a chest and accidentally locked themselves in. They suffocated. Nishaba train disaster is something that reminds me how death can come at any moment. A train with 51 wagons of sulfur, fertilizer, petrol and cotton wool somehow broke loose and rolled down the track about 20 kilometers until it derailed in the town of Qayyam, Iran. There were no humans on board. Chemical leaks ensued and authorities tried to extinguish whatever fires broke out. At one point, the whole thing explodes. And it really explodes. The whole town of Qayyam is literally demolished. Three nearby towns are badly damaged, and it was heard 70 kilometers away. The wreckage continued to explode for several days after. Around 300 people died, and more than that injured. An earthquake of 3.6 on reach to scale was produced. John List killed his whole family wife, mother, daughter and two sons. He meticulously planned the whole thing cancelling all delivery services, excusing the kids from school, and even turned the air conditioning as low as possible to preserve the bodies for as long as possible. After he killed them all, he placed the bodies in sleeping bags and lined them up. He then wrote a letter to his pastor explaining why he had to kill them. He then leaves and isn't heard from again. 18 years later he's remarried and doing the same job as before, but this time he doesn't have any children. He's finally arrested after a tip was given to the FBI. Crazy thing is that, because he planned it so well, the bodies weren't discovered until a month after the murders, so he had a huge head start and essentially started a new life in the same career and was heavily involved in a new church down in Virginia. Took 18 years to capture him. The story of Mary Vincent always stands out to me. In 1978, 15 year old Mary was hitchhiking. A man named Lawrence Singleton picked her up. He brutally raped her and eventually made her get out of the car. She planned to run, but he noticed and cut both her arms off. He threw her into a ditch slash ravine and left her to die. She packed her stumps with mud to stop the bleeding and spent all night crawling out. She eventually makes it to the highway and starts walking, naked and covered in blood. The first car that saw her sped away in fear. The second car was a couple on their honeymoon. They picked her up and she survived, 